It's a show. It's a podcast show. Welcome to the Julie Cross Podcast Show. Empowering, energising and entertaining. Hi there, friends. I have a very special story to share with you today. Some of you may have followed along on social media, but for those who haven't, let me share this amazing story because it is an affirmation that affirms so much what I of what I talk about. And it's always such a wonderful thing when you see these moments come together in life that affirm all of the messages that you believe in and that you teach. And so this is one of those moments for me. And it was certainly a, a life-defining moment. I went to Africa 27 years ago as a in my early 20s as a backpacker. And I did some traveling around on my own. And then I joined a three-week safari. There would be six of us us on that safari and our driver was a man called Moses. He was a local Maasai warrior and we got to know Moses really well. We also had a cook called Charlie. I would often sit in the front with Moses and we had some great conversations and I got to know him. Moses also got malaria on that trip and there was um, a couple of nights where I um, played nurse and looked after him. He was like my African brother, Moses was. After the safari finished, I would go on and stay with Moses and his family for another couple of weeks and have an amazing experience. You know, some people, when they go travelling, look at a country. I like to hop in a country. And the way we do that is to connect with the local people and spend time with them. And so through Moses and his family, I got the most amazing opportunity to do that. And I certainly would never forget that. It was amazing. When I left, Moses gave me a special gift. The, if you know the Maasai people, they wear lots of colourful jewellery that they make and Moses always wore this bangle, which he then gifted to me as I left the country. Now, we exchanged contact details, but you've got to understand back then, no social media, no phones, no contact. Um, to send a letter while you're backpacking, well, you know, laborious and very hard in Kenya to do the same thing when you're driving like he was or back out on the, the farm. So... We lost touch. I lost his address after backpacking for another year and we lost touch. Now, 27 years later, I always had a dream to go back and 27 years later, that dream would be realised and I would be going back to Africa. I would be doing another safari, but it would be with a different company. And then a week before I left, I just had this thought, wouldn't it be great if I could see Moses? Everything starts with a thought. Every manifestation in your life starts with a single thought that then creates a momentum. So I thought it would be great to catch up with Moses. And then with every thought, sometimes this happens in your head as well. And the other little voice said, don't be ridiculous as if you're going to catch up with him after 27 years. Who, who would know where he is now? But don't be deterred by that little voice in your head. So what I did was I put the bracelet that Moses gave me on. I grabbed a photo of he and I together and took a photo of that and put it on Facebook as you do. And the title of that post said, Because I Believe in Miracles. And I just put a shout out there to anybody that might know in my tribe, my circle of influence, anybody that might know this guy Moses. Now Moses is a common name over there. It's kind of like John. But I didn't know his last name, so I said he was Moses. He drove on my tour. The tour company was Kamuka at the time. I still have the bracelet that he gave me all that time ago. I'm going back to Africa after 27 years. He lives in Nairobi. Does anybody know Moses? Well, miracles do happen because by the end of that day, I was talking to Moses on social media. And that was just from the people in my group that knew somebody that tagged somebody. And Moses was on Facebook. Of course Moses on Facebook. So I got to t speak to Moses. Miracles happen. We had a great conversation over social media and I told him the dates that I'd be in Nairobi. He's still living in Nairobi in Kenya. I had four days, two days either side of my tour that I would be in Nairobi. He told me that unfortunately he would be away on those days so, and he would also be driving on tour. And I was going through three countries, Kenya, Uganda and Rwanda in 16 days. So there wasn't going to be an opportunity for us to catch up. But that's okay. You then surrender because the miracle had already happened. So you surrendered to that. And my trip was now not attached 
to me seeing Moses because I knew now that that wasn't going to happen. And so you let it go. And I just felt so blessed that I got to speak to him again and that to hear about his family and that he was doing so great. So that was wonderful. So I go on the most amazing safari and I do my number one bucket list thing, which is to see the gorillas in Rwanda in the wild. And it was the most thrilling experience and I'll tell you more about that at another on another episode. But the whole trip felt miraculous. It felt like it really was the time of my life and that it was everything that I dreamed of. We were in Uganda on the Nile, staying at a place there. I had just done a Facebook Live video talking about how the trip had fulfilled all my dreams. We only had a couple more days to go and we'd be back in Kenya and I'd be flying home. And how blessed I felt and grateful I was for all of my dreams coming true. We were being debriefed about where we were staying and what was available for us to do the next day. And as the lady was addressing our group and we were all sitting there listening, she briefly stopped and looked past all of us into the room behind us and said, Hi Moses, I'll be there with you in a moment. Now in that moment, my whole body got goosebumps, my heart leapt out of my chest and I leapt out of my chair. My fellow travellers were like looking at me like, what is wrong with you? And the lady kind of addressing us said, are you okay? I said, look, I've just got to move to the back of the room. But that little voice popped up in my head again and said, don't be ridiculous. This is three countries with millions of people in each country. Moses is a name like John. Of course, it's not him. But I just had to stand at the back of the room to just try and see who this was that had walked into the room. But I couldn't see him from that angle and I certainly didn't want to interrupt the lady and be rude to her. So I let her finish and I just couldn't wait for her to finish. So as soon as she finished, I ran up to her. I still wasn't going to look in the room. And I said, you just said hello to somebody called Moses. Is he from Kenya? And she said, I think he is. She, I said, is he a Maasai? She said, yes, he is. I said, did he used to drive from Kamuka? She said, I don't know. And as she turned around to look at Moses, I turned around at the same time. And Moses looked up and said, hello, my Julie. It was my Moses. It was my Moses. Three countries, millions of people, no organisation to catch up anywhere. It wasn't going to happen. And he walks into the room in Uganda. It was the most awe-inspiring moment. And it just felt divine and it felt like a gift from the universe. And it felt like that, yeah, miracles really do happen. I dragged him. I was screaming and crying. And I dragged him outside to introduce him to my group who had all heard about the story. And I'm like, this is my Moses. And they were like, the Moses? I'm like, the Moses. And nobody could believe it. Everybody was crying and nobody could believe it because they all knew how special he was to me. And I think I felt the universe, universe sort of smile and whisper to me, You see, Julie, you're right. Keep teaching what you teach. Miracles really do happen and we can create the most amazing moments in our life if we just choose to believe and choose to believe. But there's a few important things to reflect on in this situation. Number one is that I had surrendered. My having a good time on that trip was no longer attached to having to see Moses I'd surrendered that I was just grateful that I'd spoken to him. And sometimes that's what we've got to do. We don't surrender enough. We hold on too tightly to what we want to happen and then we get disappointed and that that takes the energy spiralling down. So it's sometimes you've got to ask for what you want, put it out there and then surrender to the result and trust that the universe might have a different plan for a better reason. And the other thing to get out of this and something I've reflected on so often since that moment, would I have seen him had I not made the contact initially? So had I not put out there about wanting to meet Moses, would he have walked into the room? Would Moses have come into that room that day? And if he had have come into the room, would I have seen him? Would I have noticed him? Or would we just pass each other because we weren't in tune with each other at that point? Because you know, we weren't thinking about that. So that's the thing for us all to reflect on, isn't it? Because none of us will never know the answer to that and we'll all have an opinion on that. So what do I want you to get out of this? I want you to know for sure that 
you can make miracles happen, that the power of our minds is so much more powerful than we ever give it credit for, that there are some things that we can't explain, but we could just tap into in this world. And, and why wouldn't you? I mean, why wouldn't you? So what have you got to lose by believing? So choose to believe in miracles. Get back to that childlike wonder and awe about how wonderful we are as humans, about how amazing our brains are, about how that universal energy does work with you and the universe really is trying to conspire in your favour. And I could never had a more life-affirming moment than that. So thanks for sharing in that story. It makes me feel emotional, as you can tell. Uh, So thank you so much. I'll be back. Love to hear your thoughts about this show or if there is something that you would love discussed on the Julie Cross podcast show, then please head over to iTunes and leave a review. Love to hear from you.